Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Party. One day I won't sound like I have been standing over an open fire for 12 hours, but today is not that day. However, the Dallas Mavericks won in rather convincing fashion, uh, proving my earlier concerns uh, to be nonsense, which is very, very pleasing. The Dallas Mavericks won their 25th home game of the year, which is exactly uh, what they need to be doing at this time of year, taking care of business. Uh, with their 110-91 to 91 victory over the Rockets, they are now effectively tied with uh, the Utah Jazz for f- the fourth place, though the Jazz have the tiebreaker, which means Mavericks are still stuck at sixth. Um, really nice game to watch. Uh, the, the first half was a little ugly. They played down to the Rockets level. And then in the second half, Jalen Brunson took over and, and closed out the game. And Spencer Dinwiddie did the same. Just really nice to get that kind of production. Uh, the, the Houston is, um, I mean, they have no incentive to win at this point. And when Christian Wood picked up his third foul nine minutes in, I, I you know, you could have kind of figured that the game was over. But it was nice that the Mavericks didn't do the thing that they used to do last season, which was let uh, let bad teams play with them. So, all right, um, just a quick refresher. If you want to come up on stage, um, listen for your name, and I will invite you on. Be uh, Come out to the main uh, – come out of the chat and be looking at, like – the area where you do like the request and that sort of thing, because that is where the mute button is. If the mute button is turned on, then you know you, we won't be able to hear you. Look for the green circle over your name, and that's the best way to get something off. Um, and we will hang out probably for not too long, because I really don't know what uh, what there is to really talk about after that game, um, other than it was it was nice. All right, coming up first, my guy Chris. How are we doing, Chris? Hey, Kirk. How's it going? Yeah, not going to lie, I was somewhat concerned going into halftime or down by one. I'm like, yeah, don't do what you've been doing last year. Like, But th- this Mavs team has shown resolve, and with Luka out of the game, I mean, it's just nice that, you know, we have Dinwiddie because really the last, what, 12, 13 games, if we didn't have Dinwiddie, you know, what are we, what are we like – uh, 12 and two right now with him on the team or something like that. Something real good. And they're, they're two and oh without Luca playing. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is, this is awesome. So, I mean, I know that, yeah, the Rockets are a horrible team, but you got to take care of business. I mean, cause you lose tonight and the jazz lose tonight. I mean, you're, they're just asking for us to like take the, the fourth seat right now. So, you know, hopefully Friday, it's going to be a, you know, a tough grindy game against the Timberwolves, but, Sunday, I plan on going to that game, uh, the Jazz, and also, let's hopefully we can take that fourth seed. So, yeah, and and you know, let's make no mistake, the Sunday game is also at a delightful, family-friendly time of six thirty in the evening. We just have so many like wonderful things coming up. You look at the schedule because they play. Friday at seven. I love seven o'clock start times over seven thirty start times. They play yeah. they play Minnesota at, at Minnesota, and Minnesota is going to be pissy. Um, I'm really looking forward to to that game a great deal. And and here's the deal: if they don't win, I'm probably going to be frustrated because we, you know, I, I live very game to game. But with what they've done the last several weeks, and and you know, bouncing back after the two game loss to, to to defeat Minnesota, now defeat take care of business with the Rockets. There's just a lot of positives. Like they're playing good basketball at the right time, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, the Wolves lost tonight, so they're going to be pissed and plus it'll be a revenge game for them uh friday but you know the if we lose against them on friday it's not that big of a deal i mean hopefully the jazz can lose friday as well if they, if they play friday i'm not sure if they play friday or saturday um but the sunday game obviously if we win that one we own the tiebreaker right because we have a better conference record so. i don't know the tiebreaker stuff starts to get goofy um oh yeah we we know that for sure because remember the last game of the season when was a three or four teams in the wet, like around the teams that we were like, there were so many different scenarios. Like, and at the, 
the eleventh hour we get the Clippers, you know, because of some I, I can't remember what it was. It was just funky, like just how, how these tie breaking rules work and also. Yeah, yeah. Which I choose to just not worry about it because I, I've, uh, you know, there more and more podcasts are starting to talk about like playoff seedings and what teams should want and. Dallas isn't, you know, Dallas isn't good enough to worry about that. So just, you know, play, play it, you know, play all the games and let God sort. And uh, last thing, side note, just NBA wise, but just watching ESPN, it is so annoying today on first take. Just the ESPN in general, what is up with them all over the Memphis group? Well, it's okay. I mean, I like they're... I'm having this argument with friend of the podcast Matt Moore right now, who is talking to me. You know, he's giving me grief. He's like, well. Just because the you know Memphis is is fifteen and two without Jaw doesn't mean Jaw's not an MVP candidate. I'm like, yes, it does. Because first of all, he's missed seventeen games, which is twenty three percent of the season. Mm-hmm. If you miss one fourth of the season to date right now, you're not an MVP candidate. The end. They're an unbelievable team, and I very much hope the Mavericks have an opportunity to play them in the playoffs because I think Luca and Dinwiddie just grind them to dust. Yeah, I'm just I'm sick of the whole. Just, I don't know. It's just something about ESPN and the Grizzlies and John Moran. Uh, they're just promoting him for some reason. And, I mean, even on first take, uh, Stephen A. Smith was like, you know, forget about Elvis Presley. Y'all just need to forget about him completely. He's dead. You know, like John Moran is here. I'm like, really? You're gonna say something like that? I mean, I know he's yeah. just joking and all, but it just it, it's just annoying. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's where like the the one thing that I've sort of figured out is that nobody nationally understands how to talk about the Mavericks. And I'm okay with that because that means there's not a lot of prognostications. There's not disrespect, but there's also just like, like kind of blanket confusion. Oh, I would would rather be under the radar anyway. I don't want the Mavs to be at this level. Like, Oh, we're so great. I mean, cause then we'll come in and get our asses kicked in the first round. I want to be under the radar and hopefully we can, I mean, I, I, we might play the jazz, but but we need that home court advantage because we've been playing great at home. Like lately, yeah. so I mean that yeah. that was their 25th home game of the season. It was delightful. Yeah, yeah, but let's get this win on Friday. So. That's right. Talk soon. Thanks, Chris. All right. All right, Christian, what's up? Hey, Kirk, how you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, I was gonna say so. Um, you know, the number one receiver on items. Uh, who was yours again? Okay. <laughs> uh, just wanted to say I the, I'm happy with Jalen uh, Brunson's game. Um, I think it was needed against such a weak team. I mean, if he couldn't take advantage of this matchup, then I think uh, you know I. I've I've just had concerns recently, so it was good to see him have a good game against. Well, you know, it's Portland. it's funny because if you go look at his box scores, there's nothing wrong with his box scores. He's actually been pretty effective. I just think he he probably wants more volume than he's been getting, and it's just going to be hard to come by. But they're winning all these games, so what are you going to do? Is it was it was, it was really nice to see. I I, I honestly kind of looked down in the third quarter, and then I look up, and he just has all the points. Yeah, I. And I think the thing is too in the in the previous games it's been like all of his damage comes in kind of one quarter and then the rest of the game he seems timid like he regardless of just volume I mean he could up his volume just a slight bit pump faking on those wide open threes that he's getting sure uh, and so um, I you know. Uh, happy to happy to see the game that um, he ended up having, and it it really is, you know, something to see with uh, Dinwiddie being this impactful on the team. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I think the highest potential expectations I had, he's far exceeded them, and. I was wondering in a matchup against, you know, the, it, well, it seems likely it'll probably be the Jazz, but do you think he's going to be able, like, how do you think he matches up with the Jazz? Because he's a bigger guard, you know, their guards are a bit smaller. Um, obviously, there's tons of switching, all that kind of thing, but I'm just wondering. Are we talking about uh, No, Dinwiddie. 
Dinwiddie. Oh, I think Dinwiddie does fine against against the Jazz. I the Jazz bother me. <clears throat> excuse me. The Jazz bother me because it it strikes me as entirely of a, a game of who's going to win the three point shooting battle. So that's why. And and Dinwiddie has been shooting out of his mind from three, but like. Historically, he's not a forty percent three point shooter, and he's just been so good. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, but like the foul drawing is is what I keep coming back to with with Spencer. I mean, he had eight free throws again tonight. I mean, it's just he's north of five a game. And and if you were to go to Basketball Reference, and I bet you were to sort, you know, like 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 free throw attempts per game, like that's got to be, you know, I, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm not good at both podcasting and navigating Basketball Reference, but like. That volume of, of free throws is really hard to come by for, for anybody that's not like the star of a team. Like Luca probably averages, let me just look this up. Luca Doncic basketball reference. I should know this off the top of my head, but that's the that's the way things go. Luca averages this season 7.3 free throw attempts a game. And so I know I looked this up, like as of in his time with the Mavericks before tonight, then what he was averaging 5.1. So like that that sort of between two guys, you're shooting 12 plus free throws a game is really like that just like that helps you win ball games over the long haul. Yeah, I, the only worry I have and I maybe I'm just you know my my eyes might be deceiving me. It seems he he's like getting star calls it seems like like I I'm wondering if that's sustainable. I don't know. I mean his wingspan is so frustrating for other teams because he shoots the ball often really late on these drives and it's because his arms are up and he's hanging and he's getting the shot off while drawing the contact. And so it's like, I do sort of think that style of play is sustainable. Yeah, I I definitely hope it it just seems like, you know, he'll kind of do that run into a guy, which to be fair, everybody does. Um, And and he's getting those where, you know, certainly Luca's not getting those calls. He gets, you know, beat to shit and doesn't get anything. But, um, you know, I, I definitely hope it's sustainable. I, I think he's, you know, been huge. And, you know, last year at, at minimum and definitely with someone like KP, like I, I don't know if we, we win games like this against poor teams. We certainly didn't last year. Um, and I, I just think he's been so, so important to this team. And the last question, I'll, I'll, I know, uh, you know, not much to talk about, but would you sit Spencer against the Lakers or against the Cavs, the back-to-back coming up this week? I don't think I'd sit Spencer at all. I think I'd sit Brunson. If you look at game log stuff, Brunson's been a been a warrior. Now, that's just my opinion. I bet – I don't know if you want to sit anybody against the Lakers because that's a national TV game. Um, the Cavs scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't want to play the Cavs. They're like even without some of their guard play, they're just really good. That I, I agree fully. That's what I think. Uh, you know, especially for someone like Spencer who you know drives, gets to the rim, like having Mobley there and. You know, Markinen's actually played really well. The other uh, when they played Denver, I was shocked how well he played Jokic. So, um, agree. Hope hope they uh, play against the Lakers, and you know, if we're gonna sit anybody it's against the Cavs. But appreciate you having me up, Kirk. Hope you have. You too, buddy. And uh, I, it took me. I'm a little slow in the uptake. I am not having the best football day with Tyreek Hill leaving, but. I am uh, just to address that since all oh, you like to everybody likes to give me grief. I do think it's a little funny that the AFC West is like loading up to basically go after the Chiefs, and then the Chiefs are like, "What if we take a step back?" Like this is very odd. Whatever. Okay, coming up next, my man Brett. Hey Kirk, I don't have that much, at least not much like Mavs related. There were some other things around the league tonight, uh, particularly the Miami stuff that I found. Let's do it. Uh, much. Painting than most of what happened in the. Oh, in the I mean, that was game. some of the best drama I've ever seen on a court, and and I, I so viscerally dislike Jimmy Butler. Is this great to like like me? I became a Udonis Haslam fan. It's taken twenty years. Yeah, I mean every basically every aspect of that, um, like especially like Spolstra 
like like telling him like what do you what do you what do you want me to do fight you like <laughs> just, just just incredible um but yeah th- though you know the side note of that is that is all bad for the Mavs ultimately yeah we the, need Miami you know, to win yeah with without uh Steph Clay and Draymond um th- though the not having Clay Park may arguably help them like he's been bad and Bull's been better but right um. But nonetheless, that still means the Mavs are like still three games back of that, which is still doable because the Warriors have a hard schedule and like everyone on their team is injured. Um, but anyway, with, with the Mavs, um, the, so the, so uh, I think it like Sterling Brown had was really terrible again. He managed to be a minus eleven in sixteen minutes in a game in which the Mavs were up by like. 50, uh, 25 points before the garbage time, and that's impressive. That's incredibly bad. Like I, I think he will obviously play some spot minutes, but honestly, like I would rather have literally anyone on the team start other like play other than him. He genuinely is not an NBA player. He will not be in the league next year. Um, so, so I know people like you know want to criticize like Max because he's not making shots and stuff. Looking at like three players of uh, off the bench of Maxi and. Um, and Sterling Brown and uh, Nilakina. Two of those players are players that that are NBA players. One of them is definitely not. Like like Maxi is struggling. Like he's playing on offense basically basically as bad as it's possible to play. Like yeah. you, cannot, you cannot possibly play offense worse than him. And Sterling Brown is ten times worse than that. Like he actively makes the team significantly worse every minute he's on the floor, even without touching the ball or anything. Like, yeah, it's like I don't like I knew obviously like in, in the first quarter when they you know decided to play you know the, the the full bench, I wanted to be frustrated and I was like, you know, it's not going to matter in this kind of game. It shouldn't matter. But oh. but yeah. <clears throat> I certainly understand that level of frustration with Brown. I mean, there are a lot of the, the social media folks have wanted Moses Wright to play for a while. And I like, I get why, just because like Brown does not like Brown just doesn't get to play enough. And he's clearly, you know, not clearly, I don't know this for any sort of fact, but his body type right now does not tell me he's one who's like dedicated to his craft and like working out after games and doing that sort of stuff is what I'll say. So it's, it's just, it's, it's, <sighs> I mean, this is something we're just going to kind of have to come to terms with over the last 10 games and then into the playoffs is they have eight guys. And when they go past those seven to eight guys, it's rough. I mean, it was nice. Like, I I was hoping for a nice Josh Green game. He was bad. And he was really bad. He's just – he's really not good. Uh, like, he's fun and he's chaotic. But when he makes mistakes, his mistakes are often of the sort where <clears> – <throat> he, he, he jumps at the basket into two guys and throws the ball away. Yeah, like really like like chaotic bad. Like just how are like how do you get blocked at the rim like that? Why are you in the air doing that? And like it's a growing pain problem. Okay, and I I don't excuse me, I don't like like crushing the guy. And I've I've had to explain this to people. Like I'm I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but because of who came after him, I'm simply always gonna look at him as the guy that he's not, as opposed to the guy that he is. And so it's like when you get these games where you he could do some more and he just doesn't, it's really – Yeah, I mean, in this this is the kind of game, especially with such a terrible defense that the Rockets have, um, that you, you want to see him be able to succeed. Right, some of his best games um, have come against the Rockets. Yeah, and, and I think that um, – I mean, I, I think that in the playoffs he will – play obviously less than he does now but he's it, certainly gonna play to, though but, but he, he will play because they have to like they, they like they only they only have like he is the like eighth eighth guy on the team like like he, he will probably he, he, will he play in second halves of games probably not unless, no but you like, buy minutes with him and but, but he will play like five minutes in the first half just because he can provide some energy and like, and th- and that's again, that's like where he will have to provide that value is in those in moments where, you know, if, if one of the ball handlers is in foul trouble, 
if the energy is low in the first quarter or something like that. Yeah, yeah. On the slot, the, the, the chat is confused as to who we're talking about, and we're talking about Josh oh, Green. Oh, I'm not. Um, no, Sterling Brown will not play a minute outside garbage time. In, yeah, yeah. In the, like, and, like, like the, the Green criticism is coming from the fact mainly because I know he needs to play. Like, yeah. they need his 10 to 15 minutes a game just to soak up. Like, you, you can't play guys 42 minutes a game. He has to be able to soak up 10 to 12 minutes and just not make colossal mistakes. And he didn't do anything terrible tonight. It's not what I mean. It's just he's had opportunities this last week, and he's not really taking advantage of them is what I'll say. Yeah, like he was taking advantage of those opportunities back in January, February, and then yeah. he just kind of hasn't this month, which is fine. I mean, like, he's That's he's, development. he's effectively a rookie in terms of playing time. So Yeah, it's kind no, of I agree. Happen. I agree. Um, um, I'm sorry I sound like shit, everyone. I, I'm still trying to get over being sick. And the real way to get over being sick is to not talk, but this is my. The, the, the other thing I was going to say is that we are free of Trey Burke. We are oh, that's a great point. He did not play a minute. We did not have to watch him dribble the air out of the ball at all in this game. And this is the kind of game that they had in the past. And then they went to Frank off the bench instead of him. And Frank was like, did seize, you know, he did not play an excellent game by any means, but he played competently and seized that opportunity and hopefully, you know, took that, that like emergency fourth guard spot away well, from Frank Burke. plays hard and playing hard will make up for some things. Like he, he had a couple of look at what I found kind of, kind of plays. Like offensive rebounds, like mm-hmm. And down. like, that's where him being six foot seven actually helps or however tall he is versus Trey Burke, who is short. Yeah, I mean, and that's like th- those things. Same with you know Dinwiddie being, you know, six foot six foot five and having like a good wingspan. Those are things that matter in the playoffs. Like yeah, the, that that you don't notice it in the regular season when when teams don't game plan because they don't. That just doesn't happen in the regular season. Like for for ninety percent of the games, um, but in the in the postseason, that is an extra couple inches in which and it like an extra a bit of strength in the post or in the on the perimeter that he's not giving up somewhere else so that when they need him to play he will probably play occasionally i mean yeah. be, just because he's fine and i mean if he misses like his first two shots he obviously won't play the rest of the game like that's that's just how he is um but you know he he's he's a better player than uh than like Bertans. like he's Definitely, right now, you know, playing better uh, than than that, and so like that's kind of like the line at which it has to be. And like, no one, no one who is worse than Bertans will play him in the playoffs. Yeah, like Bertans. Is it weird that I don't that I'm not concerned about Maxi? I've kind of gotten over this offensive hump with Maxi, where he is as long as he's willing to take the shots and not never look at the basket type stuff. I. I just think he's going to break through at some point. And that, and then at that point, it'll just be, you know, the Mavericks will have adjusted to not needing him to score. And then it becomes a really like a true bonus situation. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel. Like, uh, like he hasn't re- he hit like two shots. I think in the last game like, or two games ago, I don't remember which one, but other than that, he really has shot literally like 10% from, from three. Oh, it's super dark. Like, I started to write an article. I started to write like an open letter because I really know the Mavericks need him. And then I'm looking at the numbers and it's just, it's so dark. It is, it's like, like I think it was his talk who posted a graph of a graph of his, like, you know, you know, rolling three point average. And it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like, you know, when the stock market yes. crashes, it's like a line straight down. Like he was, he was doing very like pretty competently shooting until like March. And then he just had, Basically, since that really incredible game he had against Miami, he just hasn't. He's just been so bad. Um, but yeah, but I but I agree. I, I mean, I think that they are like he is passed up. He is passing up less shots now. That's good. Like obviously, that someone told him you you can't not shoot at all. Right. Like there there was one game I don't remember which what it was, but where he basically multi where he like drove out of a pump fake and, and like t- turned it over, and that was kind of the point at which it was like. Someone definitely after that set him said <laughs> you can't do that again. Like that's not right. gonna work. Like you're you're not gonna get see the floor if you if you can't at least take that shot. Yeah. Um, but but I yeah but I think that that, that as Hart said on the broadcast like 
and I, you know, rare to rarely would, you know, give any credence to anything he said, <laughs> but like the 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 bonus offense kind of comment, which is like a silly way of you know viewing things, but it is true for him. Um, like in, in the in the playoffs at this point, they are not expecting him to score anything, like other than you know those kind of offensive rebound putback spots. He's sure. not expecting him to make a shot. Like, yeah. The, the team is, has has done very fine for a month without him being any sort of an offensive threat, and he has continued to play, you know, excellent defense. Um, continue to not play significantly high minutes, which is also good. Um, and the, the last thing I'll say is that Powell has just been like way better than I would have expected him to be at this point in his career post injury. Um, like this whole season has been just. Just very impressive to me. Like obviously he's not an excellent player. He's he you know he got like a, a uh, he got he got a too large of a contract for basically no reason and 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 then he you know was pretty s- injured like right and he got injured like right when the Mavs were playing like incredibly well right like when they were in that stretch where they were playing just just incredibly well Luca second year yeah like. Like in in January. Yeah, he 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 went down when when um the first game Chris Stapps Porzingis came back from like a three week absence due to a mysterious knee injury which required some injection. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but like the Mavericks started off sixteen and five, they were just crushing people, and then injuries just started to mount. So yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, but but I, and then he was you know not great when he when he when, you know when he first got back. Um, but I think at this point, I mean, he is playing just kind of, I think, better than, you know, it would be possible to expect. And he – and the good thing about the West is that there is basically only one one big in, in the West who is a matchup issue with him. Um, and, yep. that's, and that's Jokic, who, who they, you know, won't play. Yep. Um, and, and, and so other than that, I mean, like, obviously there are many other better bigs than him, but he has an issue with a specific kind of big – and that he just won't face in the playoffs. Right. And, which yeah. means that he will be able to play, like, 20, 25 minutes a game. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, it only becomes a problem if you're playing the Suns. Then if you're playing the Suns, are you kind of happy getting the second round? Like, that sort of, yeah. you know, that's I mean, a different thing. Like, well, if the Mavs make the second round and play the Suns, it, they will lose in a maximum of five games. And I will be just thankful that they got there. Yeah. Like, like, like this, the Suns tonight – uh, against against the Wolves, they were down like ten or something in the third, and they just did do, do what they do to the Mavs in every fourth quarter and just put the like put the hammer down and just annihilate teams late. Like they they and then like obviously this is all without Chris Paul, but I mean I, I see I want to say like I hope they don't you know see the Suns, but I do hope they see the Suns because that's like would as where they are right now you know that would be a good outcome for the season. For sure. Well, thanks so much for hanging out, Brett. No problem. Thanks for having me up. Mm-hmm. We're having a fun conversation in the in the comments about Christian Wood. Um, and I just want to give my two cents on Christian Wood. Christian Wood's been around for a while. Um, he can't stick with anywhere, and it has more to do with him than it has to do with the teams. Uh, I was at an NBA Summer League where it was evident that he was just one of the best players in the gym, but then he can't stick with the team. Why? Um he is a supremely talented player that on a basketball fit only sense would be amazing with these Mavericks. Cause he would like help bring the offense to a different level. Like the way he drove around Dwight Powell tonight. And it was like a second quarter play. He's just so quick, but he can't stick with anybody. And the reason he didn't get larger contract offers than when he moved, than when he went to Houston. Cause I want to say he got like a, like it was ridiculous. It was like he was making, he was either making about what Dwight makes or he's making like 9 million. Like it was, it was absurd. And the reason he's not getting bigger offers is because of his off-court chicanery. So it's just I, I don't think Dallas would ever be interested in him. But the basketball fit I get. All right, um, Mohit, you've been waiting a while. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, so I actually didn't watch too much of this game. I, I checked in early, saw we were down like seven in the first quarter, and uh, decided to take a mental health decision, play some video games instead. So I respect uh, this. Uh, I've been playing Elden Ring, you, you know, for the last <laughs> two and a half weeks. Wait and then, a uh, The light is uh, just now at the end of the tunnel, I think. <laughs> this is amazing. You turned off the Mavericks game because you wanted to give yourself a frustration pass 
to go play Elden Ring, a game designed in frustration. Out. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, at least I can kind of know what what I'm expecting when I'm playing. I, I have my own, I have my hands on the steering wheel, it. whereas uh, I was kind of uh, frustrated early on. But uh, I think anyone could see that, uh, you know, it was a tale of two halves. Um, I actually saw on Twitter, Callie tweeted that uh, Finney Smith had like a gave like a little pep talk or like a motivational speech during halftime. And um, it was pretty apparent that, that, that we kind of took the game over in the third quarter. Um, so, yeah, I was wondering if you had any like thoughts or anything about like Dodo being a, a leader in the locker room, because I haven't actually heard him speaking up much. Neither have I. And the fact that she brought that up means it's probably going to be like the basis of one of her stories tomorrow. I'm looking forward to reading it. It matters. Um, he, just this team getting it together was key. And, and I'm glad they put it away in the third quarter. And if he was, was kind of the, you know, the, the catalyst for that, you save those sorts of chips for when you need it. Um, 82 games is too long if we're being honest. So like to come out and find motivation every night is really difficult. And they did not have it in the first half. They found it, and that's what's that's all that matters. And I'm really glad. Yeah, and uh, I guess just like last thing, looking around the league, um, I think the the Jazz and the Timberwolves lost today. So, and then the uh, Grizzlies and the Warriors somehow keep finding ways to win without their best players. But uh, it looks like that's kind of what's happening. Teams above us are still winning. Teams below us are maybe faltering a little bit. So it looks like we're going to be you know, and comfortably in this like four or five spot, but it seems like we have the easiest strength of schedule uh, as in a, at least in for the people going for that three spots. So, um, you know, anything could happen in those last 10 games. I need to look it up because <clears throat> there's a different strength of schedule. My, one of my other buddies showed it to me that basically lets you take a look at like rest days. And then, you know, cause you don't just want to go. You don't just want to compare schedule to schedule. You want to take a look at who's traveling, how far they've traveled, how many days off they've had with rest. But the Mavericks, I think, have made it through the worst part. So, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they finish. Yeah, so just looking forward to these next few games. I think we can maybe pull off a nice little win streak. Um, but yeah, looking looking forward to the rest of the season. All right, talk soon. Thanks, buddy. All right. Patrick, what's up? Patrick, you there? That's okay. We'll try to we'll try to pull you back up if you want to. Jacob, what do you got, buddy? Hey, Kirk, what's going on? Oh, just uh, trying to make it through. Um, I still sound so terrible, but at least I no longer. Well, hey, that's good. It's been a it's been a couple days since I've been up here, unfortunately. Not. Not a lot to talk about this game compared to, I guess, the other night. Um, I guess one thing that I would say is that that lineup uh, in the fourth quarter of, I think it was Spencer, it was Frank, Dorian, Reggie, and Maxi. Uh, that's the line. That's the lineup that we ha- had out there when we started to really pull away. And you know, I'd like to see more of that lineup. But I know it's the Rockets, but you know that I think it's a good mixture of defense. And probably the worst defender out of those five is, I guess, Spencer. And shooting, uh, except for Maxi right now, but hopefully he can find that. Like you say all the time, that it's a confidence thing with him. And man, tonight was the night to Chuck, and he just still didn't have it. Still didn't do it. I was, I was annoyed at that, but <clears throat> I don't know. He's gonna have a game where he hits one early, and then he hits another early, and then I, I just he, he's played basketball for too long. You know, it's, it, I've never, I went through and checked all his box scores. Like he's never had a funk like this. And I just can't help but think that he's going to pull away at the right time. Not to, to change the subject, but Tim Bontemps just uh, tweeted news. James Harden just walked to the locker room at Staples Center after landing awkwardly and grabbing at his right knee and quad late in the third quarter. Dun, dun, dun. Woo. NBA, every night is important. I just it's saw crazy. that. Uh, I actually, I actually got the Sixers Lakers game on. And How's that game looking? I was like, whoa. Uh, the Sixers were up by like twelve, but now they're only up by I think it's tied now. Jeez. I'm not really paying attention, but yeah, this is all without LeBron, so that's uh, interesting, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, back to that lineup, if I if I can. Uh, 
as I was saying, it's a, it's also got you know ball handlers uh, with uh, you know Spencer obviously, and then Frank he he's there's he's still got a little bit of playmaking ability, but uh, him shooting the ball has given me a it's giving me new newfound uh, I guess confidence and uh, even less so much so in Sterling Brown. I, I wish I wish that dude would just never play again. No, he may not. <laughs> <laughs> he just. Just give all of his mini, all of his minutes to Frank and uh, Josh. Give them to Josh. You know, let him share. I wouldn't mind that. I really wouldn't. I don't under like like playing Josh twenty five minutes a night. Like, what's the harm? Yeah, oh, I mean, well. he may, he's 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 fun to watch. You said earlier, he may not always have the best game against you know the worst opponents or whatever. Just best game in general. But you know, he's fun to watch. Oh, and so, I need to see it. Like, I I don't. I get very critical because it's my nature on these 15 minute like jaunts where he plays 15 minutes every third game and then he plays like eight or 10. Like if there's a game where he can play a ton, I want to see him play a ton. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 I probably out of all the young players that we've had in a while, I, like I've like him, Jay Crowder, uh, Shane Larkin, just to name a few, like I want him to succeed the most like I can't want it bad enough for him yeah I like that I like the take I mean I'm excessively negative about him because I just wanted someone else and I'll probably <laughs> never change because I can't help myself yeah well, yeah anyway yeah not a lot to talk about with this game tonight but uh you had to have seen what happened in Miami right man they're that's great right now man fuck Miami for not helping us jerks it's <laughs> a little like I, so much drama and, you know, it was – they should have won, but they gave us so much content that I, I'm almost ready to forgive them because I'm going to think about Haslam saying over and over again, I'll beat your ass, which is so what he, he was saying from someone behind the bench. The video was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> even, yeah. Spolstro, even Spolstro was angry too. I was, I was like, damn, that's – that's the heat culture I'm always hearing about, I guess. Well, I mean, I'm just – Butler's a guy who – I'm sure if he were a Maverick, I would love him to pieces, but he's like a wrestling heel. He just annoys me. Yeah, no, yeah, all of Miami annoys me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, Jacob. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one. You too. All right. I think we got one more guest. Uh, my man, Greg, who wants to come gloat. How you doing, Greg? Kirk, how are you? I'm okay. okay. So, so uh, I have a couple of questions for you, not really about the game, but even though it was, I call those type of games playing with your food types of games because you basically know the result, but you finally want to play with it. So here are my questions. Uh, I don't think they'll win, but do you think Dorian would have a chance at like most improved at all? And do you think Jason Kidd has, will get any coach of the year votes or is that not possible? Do you think? So I think that Dorian will actually get, some all defense consideration just because of who is not qualified. Like there's a couple of stalwarts this year who haven't played at all. So it opens up a spot. I don't think anything like most improved is on, is on the, the radar, but I do think some like an all defensive candidacy would be pretty cool if he was like second team. Cause the Mavericks are going to finish with the top five defense and nobody, like he's, he's the person that's, you know, Maxie's played pretty good, but Maxie's also missed a lot of games. Dorian's an Iron Man. Um, the Jason Kidd thing I'll put it to you like this. I, the short answer is no, because they're basically going to finish with, with a slightly better record than last year. And, you know, they might still finish in the fifth seed. And, and people forget this, the matter for the fifth seed last year. So I don't really see that happening. But I do think that he's been, he's, you know, <clears throat> Skin talked about this today because he was, or maybe it was yesterday, where he was annoyed with kind of the national conversation about the Mavericks. And I get it because, you know, Kid has been better than advertised in almost, yeah, it's nice to see that defense is rapidly improved with most of the same roster, and we didn't know that was even possible. And like you, when I first talked to you, we were talking about a 500 team, and it's cool to see that the Jets have been turned on to the team, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are they now? The Mavericks are 17 games over 500. Yeah. All right, man. Well, that's all well you enjoy Tyree to. Kill, you son of a bitch. Um, and we'll, <laughs> we'll continue to talk about the, the football uh, a little offline. Thank you so much for joining. You got anything else?
That's all I have. You you have a good one, Kirk. Thanks for everything. Yeah, you too, buddy. Yep. Okay, guys. Thank you for hanging out. Um, I appreciate you uh, spending some time with me, even though this game wasn't uh, all that interesting. Um, look for the recap pod in your feeds. I'll be back with the Moneyball Minute on Friday morning and when we will do this again Friday night. Everyone have a great rest of your week.